So brilliant, yeah. I mean, thank you for your time. I'm guessing things are busy at the moment with the single out and everything ramping up again. Very busy, yes. It's um, it's a lot going on at the moment, but it's um, it's all very exciting. <clears throat> excellent. So yeah, the, like I said, the new singles out. It's an excellent single. Really enjoyed it. But I'm looking forward to hearing the rest of the album. I mean, it, it, is the single a good indication of what we can expect from the record? It's a, you know, it's a, excuse me. <clears throat> It's a it's a mixed bag, you know, in terms of I mean, obviously it's a soul album and largely, so certainly it gives an indication of the rest of the record for sure. But I would say that um it's quite diverse in terms of some of the sort of like genre influences and within obviously the soul sphere. So yeah, yeah there's some more sort of ballady type stuff, some more bluesy type stuff, and then there's some more upbeat stuff as well, like Preacher Man. So yeah, it's it's mixed. But yes, hopefully it gives you a good indication of what's to come. Brilliant. I mean, you must be excited to get it out. It's been a it's been a challenge in two years. You must be excited. There's still a few months to go that it's coming out in June, the record, isn't it? Indeed, yes. Yeah. So we've got this single out and then we've got a, a couple of follow-up singles, which I'm excited about. Um, and yeah, it's it's great. I mean, as as you said, it's been a long sort of journey through um the creation of the album and the various challenges that have been we've yeah. all been faced with in terms of COVID, um, but also you know personal challenges and all yeah. of that sort of stuff. So, yeah, it's I feel really um, I don't know even how to describe it. I feel just really sort of excited and um, yet yeah, like light about it coming out. You know, um, I mean, you've mentioned COVID and the challenges of the last two years. What one of the things you said. It, it, including your personal challenges as well. You didn't want to impact the, or any of that to impact your vision for the record. What, what was that yes. vision? What was that vision? Well, I, I, I'd say what that vision was is what the record sounds like. Ultimately, I feel quite sort of... Um, obviously, it's been an incredibly long process in terms of the development of the sound and producing and bringing different musicians in. And so the vision for the record was really to... I suppose take inspiration from, you know, I love like Motown records and old soul records and things like that, those classic records. So it was for me really about kind of mixing that or bringing that into the mix with, you know, more something that's more modern sounding, very much about serving the songs, I suppose, at the, at the core of it, you know, for me, songwriting comes first before anything else. So, you know, it's been a, a huge learning curve taking all of these songs from like, you know, maybe just writing something on the piano or writing a demo all the way through to a kind of finished produced mastered piece of music 14 times round, you know, it's quite a, it's quite a hefty beat. Um, so yeah, it was really about that kind of bringing those sonnets together, trying to sort of preserve and I suppose respectfully preserve sort of some of the classic ideas of soul music and then kind of you know serving the songs I suppose and I feel like I've hopefully accomplished that with the record. Yeah, brilliant I mean in terms of your writing process and how does it work for you when you're writing a song and has that has that changed with the challenges of the last two years? It's well it's different for each song you know um, certain songs I suppose I sit I, I write them on a piano I mean the whole record I've written independently on my own so I've not well there's no other writers on the record right. So the process always starts with me in a, in this room usually, or in another room. Um, and generally speaking, I start with like piano chords, and I you know I write on the I write on the piano, or I might start with a, a drum beat and a bass right. part and a piano part, or something like that. Um, so it, it's very different, in, and and lyrically it's very different. You know, sometimes you have kind of um you know thoughts about what's what's going on in your life or um what you're observing in the world for example and you know those kind of tend to come through um right. in songwriting other times I use like methods like um what's it called like stream of consciousness writing where you just kind of hit record and you sing all the way okay. through and then you kind of pick out what it is that you're saying and what resonates with you and then you know some of the songs on the record were actually written in, in full like that in sort of like this one in particular that was an entire stream of consciousness oh, okay um for example so yeah it's all I use a lot of different approaches but generally it just comes from the heart you know 
just sit down and and see what see what comes out really i mean which is a, a big element of that kind of music that influences you i mean what going back to the beginning i mean what were your early musical memories and is there a particular artist that that had the biggest impact on your life yeah you know what i i, I always say this in interviews but it's true um when i was I was about eight and my auntie bought me this, gave me an old record player of hers and my mum and dad like collected vinyl. Mm. My mum's really big into soul music. Um, and she gave me, between them, my dad's like in soul music as well, but also like big fan of the Beatles and yeah. like the Beach Boys and people like that as well. And he's also like into prog rock. So there's a real mixture of like stuff right, going yeah. on in my household. Um, but they gave me a selection of records, which they were like, you know, they, they're both really into music. So they took the time about which are the records that someone at eight years old should have. So they gave me a Stevie Wonder Greatest Hits record, a Jackson 5 record, a Beach Boys record and a Beatles record. Oh, wow. And so I loved all of them. But Stevie Wonder was sort of that was just on repeat constantly you know yeah. I loved Stevie Wonder from yeah being like seven eight years old mm -hmm. and then obviously like over time kind of growing up you know you buy sort of like these or people buy you like family friends buy you things for Christmas don't they or whatever and you get like these you know those like compilation CDs with all different stuff on them yeah. and I remember kind of discovering through those sorts of things like artists like Mary Mary you know right. um, and like like gospel, more gospel influenced stuff or even like, you're not really meant to speak about R. Kelly anymore, are you? But, you know, <laughs> no, things but... like, you know, artists like that, where you would, you would, um, you know, you'd, <clears throat> you they, you know, they'd have this kind of R&B stuff that was heavily influenced by gospel music, for example. Right. And so it was through, through that, I think, that I started to, act, you know, buy all the CDs from different people like Brandy and all these kind of like 90s, <laughs> 90s R&B artists and things right. like that. So it was a real mixture of, you know, old soul and, um, you know, and, and sort of more modern like 90s R&B stuff that kind of gave me that inspiration, I suppose. OK, on to kind of inspiration. The video for the single as well is quite striking. I mean, what, what inspired that? Because it's part of a series, isn't it? what what was it the is, kind of yes. whole process behind that was the thought process behind that yeah you know it's crazy so it's funny because obviously that was the the last video that we shot from this series of six that we did right. and i ended up taking on I, I creatively directed and um exec produced all the music videos and then edited quite a few of them as well but the preacher man one was like the final one that we did and so i was like i was umming and ahhing about it a little bit and i kind of went to the team and i, I sort of said you know what do you think if I direct this one? And everyone was like, yeah, you can do it, go for it sort of thing. So, you know, I kind of came, I came up with a few different concepts. Obviously when you're putting a music video together, you know, you write, you write a bit of a treatment. I think there were two prior treatments to this particular concept that we explored, first of all, and for various reasons, they weren't going to quite come off. Um, but I'm so glad that they didn't because this ultimately felt like it was the right concept for it. Okay. Um, and I, I suppose it was kind of like, you know, the, the concept of the song in terms of Preacher Man, it's obviously about like, you know, these various, you know, I, I've sort of um, created this Preacher Man character, but it's about these various sort of spiritual encounters, yeah. you know, where you kind of learn things about the world and you learn things about yourself and that sort of journey, I suppose. Um, but I really wanted to sort of like create this this actual character of, of a preacher man. Right. Um, and, you know, I came across a dancer who was a choreographer as well called Ziri, who was just somebody sent me a video of his and I was just absolutely amazed. I was like, this guy, he's he's the guy, you know, what I mean, right. just so charismatic and so sort of brilliant at, uh, what he doesn't you know communicated sort of and I don't really like like interpretive dance do you know what I mean but yeah. he communicated messages of things through the way that he moved in a very sort of classy just well thought out way and I just thought this is the person that I want to to exemplify this preacher man you know so I also you know really didn't want to kind of go for a sort of generic um like church setting necessarily yeah. for a song called Preacher Man. Um, but 
I started looking into sort of other ideas and I found sort of like bell ringing as this concept, you know, like there's a bell ringing societies that, you know, I didn't really know too much about bell ringing. I've learned a lot about bell ringing through the process of creating this music video. Um, and, you know, I just love the idea that bell ringing was about sort of calling people back to faith. Like, it, right. you know, bell ringing traditionally is about calling people to church or calling people to come together. Yeah. Um, and so I love the idea of that. And then, you know, we explored various bell towers and we ended up going to have a look at Liverpool Cathedral Bell Tower. Oh, okay. And it's just incredible you know it's like one of the biggest bell towers in the world and it's got this very industrial feel which I kind of love about it as well and it I was just like this is perfect we have to do it here so we you know we had the bell tower we had dancers we didn't have a ringing room because the ringing room is below the bell tower of course and they the bells in Liverpool Cathedral are so heavy that there's only about 12 people in the whole of the country who can ring them, that oh, are wow. trained to ring them. There's a real art to it, isn't there? There's a right, real... which I, again, I didn't know about. So, you know, so we, we explored all these variety of options of, you know, like different places where we could use this belt, create this ringing room or use a ringing room. And eventually I was just like, you know what, let's make a ringing room. And right. so I then had to, you know, figure out sort of like how we're going to create this ringing room, ordering rope from Amazon and like, yeah. you know, cutting, going in and cutting rope to the right lengths and thinking about how we could make it, you know, feel like it was pulling down and things like that. Yeah. So it's a real sort of immersive um, first experience directing. But I absolutely, there's a lot of maths involved in like ropes and all of the yeah. rigging and all of that sort of stuff. Um, but, you know, how it's come out is is really what, you know, it's it's very in line with what I had in my head, which it oh, was, brilliant. you know, something that was kind of very impassioned that has a sentiment and it, it, it sort of communicates the message, but in a, you know, in a, in a not too sort of on the nose way and it's you know it's got that creativity attached to it in terms of the dance and you know that sort of tribal feeling about it and things like that so yeah that was that was really what I was going for in terms of the video concept okay what about the, the kind of series what what's the are the, are the videos linked in is there a concept through oh, the videos are yeah you, I mean they're all you know like like with the music production the, the videos were a more about you know serving each song individually and kind of taking each song and going well, what you know what represents this creatively visually um and so you know there's each video has its own unique concept um there are again i don't want to talk too much about what's kind of coming up but they all explore different um different things you know there's there's a couple that are more performance based um there's one that is outside I can't say too much about that one but that required me being um in a river which was very very cold for example um so yeah that we just we just you know each director that worked on each music video I worked very closely with in terms of developing a creative concept and then you know each one is about serving the song basically and there's definitely links in terms of sort of like you know um the styling of the videos and things like that and you know if you listen to the song where does this kind of where does it yeah. feel like this should be based and located and all of that sort of stuff so yeah I'm really excited about sharing all these videos as they as they come up throughout the campaign. Okay I mean just on I mean you've talked a lot about kind of things that have influenced you I mean the themes of the album this sort of spirituality has been mentioned inequality female empowerment are there particular events that trigger you to write about certain subjects or or have triggered you on this record or is it just subjects you feel passionately about because obviously they're strong they, subjects they are strong subjects sure i mean i suppose you know they're all kind of subjects that are embedded with me and as you go through life you you know develop opinions about things don't you and so they yeah. obviously kind of come through in in music um i suppose like you know, areas like empowerment or um, uh, that kind of side of things is, let me think about this. So what was, what were the other themes you said? Hold on. Um, there's female empowerment and um, we've got inequality. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, subjects like inequality, certainly like, for example, that's, 
I suppose that's a strong theme in a, in a couple of the in a couple of the records. Um, certainly, you know, um, that's an area that I feel very strongly about, both in terms of sort of like class and in terms of race as well. Yeah. And obviously, being that this is a soul record, and being that my influences are you know about are taken from soul music and black music. You know, of course, as you're exploring that music, you are exposed much more to um, the issues faced by um, people in those communities, basically. And so over many, many years of like listening to black music, loving black music, working with a lot of black musicians, for example, um, you obviously become heavily like sort of, you know, engrossed in that, I suppose, and heavily aware of what's going on and, you know, um, it makes you feel passionate about things like that more, you know, which I think is the amazing power of music, isn't it? And, Definitely. you know, certainly like, for example, one of the backing singers that I work with, who's called Anjali um, Sweeney, she's like a racial activist and I've been working with her for about five years. And, you know, certainly in the very early days of us working together, there was two other back and vocalists as well. And we would, you know, we would sit around the table often after a rehearsal and, you know, you share things, don't you? And so, you know, people sort of sharing their experience with, is with you kind of um, really sort of gets you to think about yeah. these things in a lot more depth, let's say. And so, you know, I, I feel incredibly like passionate about um, those sort of issues in terms of sort of like race and also inequality in other ways as well so yeah okay uh, I mean uh, just in terms of the other thing you talked about in the record is losing a kind of sense of spiritual purpose mm -hmm. I mean it's been a difficult time in your life on a personal level and obviously with Covid sure. what, what's kept you going what or what keeps you battling on and keeps you keeps you motivated or driven hey. <laughs> okay yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, I'm not um, religious in a traditional sense. So, you know, I don't follow a particular religion. I have, um, you know, lots of different gurus whose books I read and, you know, a lot of stuff based on like Hinduism and okay. um, mysticism and things like that, that I'm, you know, really into. But I suppose that, um, you know, I think it's really important when you go through challenging times to try to maintain a positive mental attitude and yeah. you know you can turn any sort of traumatic situation I think with a positive attitude into something um something that feels magical I know that sounds a bit maybe like airy fairy or whatever but I do think that you know going through for example like my accident you 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 learn a lot about who you are and you learn a lot about how much strength you have and perseverance. And right. I think, you know, when you have a vision for something and it's something that you're working towards, um, faith and hope is all that, all that will sort of facilitate that, you know, that facilitate that perseverance. Cause there's certainly times where things become incredibly yeah. challenging. Like, you know, we've talked about with COVID and, you know, having an accident and then having COVID to deal with and things like that. But I think, you know, yeah, faith, faith and hope are the things that keep you going. I mean, you mentioned your accident, so obviously you, you've, you, you've, you've dealt with all you're dealing with that. I mean, what, what did you learn about yourself through through that or through your experience because from what I've read it was a fairly life life-changing experience absolutely yeah um what did I learn about myself that's a good question um I suppose I learned that I have got a lot of um perseverance and you know you learn you learn how much strength you have I think when you go through something traumatic you know strength has to come from somewhere a place that you didn't even know existed you know yeah. what I mean from the yeah. depths of you kind of thing um and you know I suppose the way I've kind of dealt with what I experienced was to you know try and reframe it I suppose into okay. you can't do that all the time you can't maintain it it's not possible you know when you go in and out of it but to try and reframe it and go right well you know what has this given you in terms of a mindset or a um or inspiration or whatever to that's that is positive and you know there's a lot of that that's come out of having having had that accident um and a lot of that that's come out of having 
gone through COVID, you know, the way that I approached making the record really wouldn't have been, I wouldn't have done it this way. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So uh, ultimately the record that, you know, has come out of the process of all of these factors, you have to, you have to kind of go, well, that's not what that record would have sounded like had you have not experienced this. And, and I am, you know, incredibly lucky to feel that and I know for a lot of artists that you know you go through process you make a record and then it come you get to the end of it and you go well it's not quite what I wanted it to be and I think having all of that time and kind of really overseeing it in in a detailed way has enabled me to come out of the process and go do you know what that is the best I could do and that is and I am happy with it and it is what I wanted it to be you know and that's a, an amazing creative achievement for me um, particularly because I'm such a perfectionist. So, you know, um, I feel incredibly like like privileged and happy that that's, that's the outcome, really. Yeah, I mean, a lot of artists we've spoke to over the last few months have said that the music industry, it's a, I mean, it's a brutal industry, it's touring, writing, touring, writing, recording, touring. They've had yeah. that break to be able to explore. So a lot of records coming out now are, like you said, not what people would expect from them because they've had time yeah, to sit down. They're not write. rushed. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They've got that time in development, which is what's needed, really. Mm. Yeah, I mean, just going back to what we talked about, about the accident and what you learned about yourself. Did, did your outlook, I mean, did your outlook on life change after the accident? Because a lot of people that go through like near death experiences or anything like that, they'll, they'll kind of come through and say they've got a different outlook on life. Was that the case with you? Definitely. And, you know, I suppose for, from a sort of, you know, if I'm going to be like super honest about it, Obviously, what happens is in a trauma is that you, you know, you have a, a trauma response to that. And then you, your perception changes in the early stages or minded anyway. But I think this is quite common in that, you know, you, you don't see the world as safe, for example. So things that you felt like, you know, I would have jumped out of an aeroplane before I would have, you know, I would have liked to have done that. You know what I mean? Yeah. I probably won't do that now. Yeah. Um, but, you know, things like that where, you know, you, you kind of don't think, you don't think things will happen to you, do you? We all suffer with that a little bit. We think, oh, that's somebody else that that happens to and it's awful and you empathise, but you just, you think you're invincible, don't you? And so when you come out of having a serious accident where you've had a near miss of nearly being paralysed by a tiny margin, right. you kind of, you kind of realise that you're not invincible. <laughs> do you know what I mean? And yeah. That, that life can throw things at you and you know you just don't know what what's going to come of it but in a sense what that gives you or what that gave me is like well then if you don't know what's around the corner you might as well go for it do you know what I mean yeah. you have to kind of like put your all into everything you do and you know take risks and like just just like go for it like I said so I think it, it changes your perception in some ways and you know dealing with that kind of like change in terms of like what's dangerous and what's safe and all of that stuff is is something that is a long process for it's going to be a long process for me right. um and I'm working through it you know um but but yeah I think there's positives and negatives yeah. basically and yeah I think you know I'm, I'm all right with the with where I'm at at the moment <laughs> you've got a smile on your face so it's all good oh. um, just <laughs> talking about I mean just one thing you mentioned was taking risks I mean you've you've said that the record w wasn't what your original vision was but were, were there any risks you took on the record at all well in terms of I mean the record certainly has come out in how I originally envisaged it but the, the process of getting there yeah. it was entirely different because you know we were in lockdown it was originally supposed to be sort of like studio sessions there was going to be some overdubs maybe afterwards um right. but it was you know it was largely going to be caught in these two or three recording sessions over a few days you know at a studio right. And obviously the approach then had to change to kind of working online remotely with people. Yeah. But that really gave a sort of an opportunity to kind of handpick individual people for individual songs and then tailor each song to, or tailor the musicians that I brought in for each song right. um, to the sonic and the performance style that I wanted for each song. So um, that was, you know, an incredibly sort of like, uh, interesting and creative experience 
in terms of risk taking i mean the whole doing a whole album like this independently is enough of a risk you know what i mean i think yeah. um you know the biggest risk really was making the decision to do the album in the first place because it's a it's a big project to undertake and um you know it's not something that I've done before it's my debut so you know right. you don't know how it's going to go do you or what the road looks like um so I think you know in terms of actually musically risks um yeah there's a you know there's a couple curveballs on on the record um particularly like the end track on the record you know when I was putting the sort of track order together for the album it was like you know it's a bit of a puzzle trying to piece it all together and you know that the end track was never going to be the end track but oh, okay. it was like I was bookending it with sort of the start and the, the end what was going to be originally the end and I just couldn't get the pieces to fit in the middle you know so it's like <laughs> something's wrong with these bookends basically and as soon as I kind of you know sort of rethought about what what an end song was and what a beginning song was the whole thing kind of just came together very quickly um but yeah that that last track I suppose is is more of a curveball um certainly and you know um long songs are probably you know but people say oh you can't have songs that are six minutes long or seven minutes long and all of that sort yeah, of stuff <laughs> well you know yeah exactly you can can't you so I don't think that's particularly risky but you know I think people have different views on these days everything should needs to be three minutes long and there certainly are songs that are that sort of length which that's the length that they felt like they needed to be but those ones that you know felt like they needed to go on for that bit longer they do and I certainly you know don't shy away from things like that when yeah. I'm making music. Perfect okay just to finish off then you won't have been pre-warned about this but we'd like to do a quiz. Okay. <laughs> um, we, we thought we'd take Manchester for you. So oh, well, that's questions. good. Great. All right. Fine. Five questions, five random questions, some music, some sport, some kind of general knowledge. See how oh, you go. Don't on. ask me about sport. I'm not going to do get anything with that, but go on. Yeah. <laughs> okay, right. So the first one, it's an either or. So you've got two answers, apart okay. from one. Um, the Smiths released four albums. Which one of these isn't the Smiths album? Oh, We've got Strange Ways Here We Come or A Northern Soul. I don't know. This is a guess. This is going to be a guess. I can't, it, that's awful, isn't it? But I don't know the answer. Um, I'm going to say a Northern Soul isn't theirs. Correct. Is it? Yeah, it's by the birth. <laughs> Perfect. Good and stuff. on that subject, Richard Ashcroft dedicated his song, A Northern Soul, to one of the Gallagher brothers. Which one was it, Noel or Liam? Oh, Liam? No, it was Noel. <laughs> Literally no idea. I didn't know that. Okay, it, right. And I didn't know. So in 1979, Dave Sexton managed one of the Manchester teams. Was it United or City? That is like not a question for me at all. But <laughs> my brother will want to kill me now. Um, well, he's a supporter of City. So let's say City. Oh, it's United. <laughs> I'm not doing very well here, am I? You're doing better than some. Don't worry about it. OK, uh, which famous landmark in Manchester opened on the 31st of May, 1979? Which fam These questions are so difficult. <laughs> which famous landmark opened in May? In what year? Yeah, I'll give you a choice. It's either the Trafford Centre or the Arndale Centre. Oh, that'd be the Arndale Centre then. Yeah. Not the Trafford Centre. <laughs> Oh, I've seen some of the shops in the Trafford Centre. It does look like it has. I mean, yeah, absolutely. But the, the Arndale Centre has been there since yeah, I've been yeah. alive, I think. So. Yeah. <laughs> OK, last question. Which Manchester band released the single, Sally Cinnamon? Was it the Stone Roses or New Order? The Stone Roses. Perfect. Yep. Yeah. I should know that because I do stuff with hooky. So, right. yeah, I, I wouldn't have got away with that one, I don't think. <laughs> I'm glad I got that right. Perfect. Three out of five. Brilliant. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So the last question then. I mean, good luck. First of all, good luck with the record. Um, hopefully we'll, when the record comes out, we'll be back on tour and we'll get the chance to see you live. Indeed. Um, obviously the record's got some very deep themes to it. If somebody kind of really pays it, went, pays real attention to it when they're listening to it, what, what do you hope they come away from it with? Whatever they need to come away from it with, you know? I think um, 
music is all about interpreting interpreting um you know themes and concepts isn't it and um so yeah i don't i wouldn't want to impose anything on what people would get out of it i'd hope that that would be um self-driven let's say okay brilliant and if, if well, i mean hopefully we'll catch up again before the end of the year what, what what's the rest of the year panning out like for you it's yeah it's busy um obviously like you said you know there's going to be a tour towards the end of the year which we're just sort of in the in the throes of arranging at the moment so i'm really excited about that we've got some great um great shows great venues um that we're just talking to at the moment for that so obviously we've got the tour back end of the year we've got another record coming out on the um 8th of march for international women's day Right. And then we've got another single coming out after that. And then obviously the album out towards the sort of summertime, June time. So, yeah, it's kind of full on one one after the other and, and then ultimately resulting in a tour. So it's going to be a, a long journey, but I'm super excited about it. And yeah. Brilliant. Perfect. Well, like I said, I really enjoyed the single. So I'm looking forward to hearing the rest of the record and, and seeing the video Thank series. You. Now you've piqued my yes, interest. Yes, absolutely. That yeah, yeah. Oh, so, great. Well, thank you so much for having me. It's lovely no, to meet thanks you. for your time. Um, hopefully we'll be able to catch up when you tour and carry on this conversation. Absolutely. Yeah, sounds good. I'd love to, to I play in Leeds. So my family are actually from, a lot of my family are from like Leeds, Yorkshire way. So <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, definitely there's some great venues in Leeds. So it'd be great to catch up with yeah. you. Yeah, lovely. All right. Thanks so much. Perfect. No worries. Have a nice day. Thank you. you too. Bye.